Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Well, today we're going to look at the verb and noun to mark. Now, you've probably heard this before because when a teacher grades a paper or marks a paper, he declares which answers are right and which answers are wrong. In English, the word mark is very clear. If you drop some food on the table, it will mark the table. If you have a stain on your jumper, it's a mark that you have on your jumper. Okay, and you have to wash it to get it out. Uh, but to mark is to place a mark on something. So when the teacher writes on the paper that your, your answers were all correct, 10 out of 10 or 100%, he's placing his mark. And in the old days, of course, when people couldn't read or write, to place your mark of some kind on a paper was considered to be very important. So, for example, my great-grandparents uh, and further back couldn't read or write. So they, um, they used to uh, sign official documents by placing their mark because they couldn't write their name. And when I'm looking through old family documents, which are all online uh, in, in bits of the UK, uh, you can... You can see it says their mark because they couldn't write their name. It's very, very sad thinking about it that way. But anyway, mark, uh, to mark simply means to write on the paper. Zero, one, two, three, or whatever. But we also, we also um, mark occasions. Okay, so for example... The king and queen of England are in Scotland today to mark their coronation, which just means to remember, to remember the coronation, because we used to mark dates on calendars. Maybe not even dates, but just to write a little, a little note on the calendar, to mark it, to remind us of a particular date. So to mark has a few meanings. It's to remember something on the calendar. It's the grading of the <clears throat> of the teacher and when you're filling in a form for the government or uh, a job application sometimes you're asked to complete a questionnaire which you have to mark and you do that by answering the questions and the the form might ask you to mark as complete and uh, you know when you're on the internet with a web page it might ask you to click the box to show uh, that you're marking something is finished or completed. Um, th these are all referred to as marks as well sometimes. So it's good to know Mark is also a common boy's name in the UK, which I think came from the Latin Marcus. Okay, so, oh, that just reminds me... Um, of when we used to learn Latin at school, we used to use a series of books called Eki Romani. I don't even know if I'm saying that correctly in Latin, Eki Romani. They were the most dullest books ever about two boys in ancient Rome called Marcus and Sextus. Eki Romani, gee, that's a bad memory of Latin at school rising early, singing badly, and then um, having to study Latin with these Eki Romani books. Oh dear, awful. Anyway, the king and queen are here in Scotland to receive the Scottish crown jewels, marking their coronation. So let me just explain a bit more about that for you today. Um, king Charles III is currently here with his wife, uh, and they'll be presented with Scotland's crown jewels in Edinburgh later in a ceremony to mark, to remember his coronation. He'll receive the crown and scepter, 
which form part of the crown jewels of Scotland, which are known as the Honours of Scotland. They're actually the oldest crown jewels in the country. And you can see them if you visit uh, Edinburgh Castle. For those of you who think our royals are purely English and uh, the royal jewels, as you know, are kept in the Tower of London, that isn't the whole story because the the let me get this right at one point in our history as i mentioned i think yesterday the king of scotland came south to be the king of both countries and uh that marked a new era of scotland and england joining to create a big chunk of the uk so the Scottish crown jewels were kept separate and they're the oldest and they were first used by Mary, Queen of Scots. That was a lady who was kept imprisoned by Elizabeth I of England <clears throat> for most of her life. A very tragic story. I mean, the royals of Scotland and their battles with the English, uh, really a dreadful, dreadful part of our history. But let me describe these um, Scottish royal jewels. So they have 94 pearls in them. Um, this is just the crown, 94 pearls. Uh, gold cross uh, on the top with uh, an enamel orb. Um, the crown itself weighs 1.59 kilograms, whatever that is. You know I'm not good with the metric system. No one here is. So 1.59 kilograms, I don't know, I'll need to see what that is in pounds and ounces for it to make any sense to me. Um, and it has 43 precious gems all around it. And they're going to have 700 members of the Royal Navy, British Army and Royal Air Force marching through the streets of Edinburgh, bringing these jewels from... Uh, Edinburgh Castle to St. Giles Cathedral. What a waste of money, really. I'm not really a royalist, but I don't like to see money being thrown around, especially when whole chunks of Scotland are deprived economically, um, have their life squeezed out of them with drug addiction and alcoholism. Did you know that... Um, uh, Scotland's now the drug death capital of Europe. Really? I mean, isn't that awful? Uh, the story goes, and I don't know if this is true, that uh, um, uh, we have more drug addicts here per person than any other part of the UK. Um, why that is, I have no idea. Well, I, I probably know part of it. I think... Scottish people were always known for having a very hard, hard attitude towards life. And uh, not a lot changed over the years with that. It's very sad. I really wish I could I could explain more about that to you. Um, so, yeah, 700 people. <clears throat> and also at this event will be the Stone of Destiny. Uh, this is a very famous icon of Scotland. The Stone of Destiny was a stone which was used to crown the Scottish royals. And at different points of its history, it's been kidnapped, vanished, ransomed, <laughs> uh, stolen. All kinds of things have happened with it. Uh, so it's it's come to be a symbol of the country, a symbol of independence. And there's been many debates about where it should be over the years. I think at one point it was in Westminster in London. Then it was returned to, uh, I think, Scone Abbey was where it used to be. I think now it's in Edinburgh. I don't know, but uh, it's very contentious. So if you're interested in UK history or the history of Scotland... Uh, the Stone of Destiny would be very interesting for you. I'm not sure 
if that would have featured in the movie Braveheart, because uh, I know Braveheart was all about uh, William Wallace. I don't know if the Stone of Destiny was around at that point. I'm not, although I love history, um, that part of history I'm not really interested in. So I haven't seen the movie Braveheart, but I know about it. Actually, William Wallace was born just a mile away from where I am right now. They have a big monument dedicated to him. So anyway, these crown jewels, known as the Honours of Scotland, will be presented to the king oh, by, oh, here we go, um, pomp and ceremony. Um, the crown jewels will be presented to the king by the very reverend Professor David Ferguson, Dean of the Chapel Royal and Dean of the Order of the Thistle. Thistle. Who cares? Really, I mean, they say we have no money, but uh, someone clearly has to organise all of this. Then there'll be a 21-gun salute. So that means there'll be 21 guns firing ammunition into the sky. Well, I wouldn't have thought that would be very good for the environment. A 21-gun salute. What a waste of ammunition. <laughs> Anyway, um, it'll be that'll be fired from Edinburgh Castle at twenty past three. Uh, Prince William and his wife Kate uh, will be here to join the King and Queen. That's the Prince and Princess of Wales, and in Scotland, they're known as the Duke and Duchess of Rothsey. Rothsey, that's a really depressing little island. Um, well, actually, it's a really depressing little town. Uh, which, again, has some serious economic problems uh, on an island called, um, oh, I don't remember. Yeah, Rothy is a town on uh, an island here in Scotland. And then there's going to be the Red Arrows, which is a group of planes which will be flying over, doing all kinds of stunts and things. Crazy, really I really wish they would learn the the value of money, you know. I I would love to see this whole thing just wiped away and replaced with an office block. But not because I don't like ritual, it's because it's time to move on, you know. These nothing's getting done because we waste our time with these ridiculous rituals. That's just my opinion, okay? Anyway, Mary Queen of Scots was the first person to use uh, the Scottish crown jewels. They were given to her from the Pope. Well, they were actually given to James the Fourth, which presumably was her father uh, or grandfather. And then they've made a new sword called the Queen Elizabeth sword. Yeah, there's a question mark there over where the money comes from for this. When you compare that to the other side of the country where there's people literally dying of alcoholism, I just don't see how they can possibly justify this kind of ceremony here. Who knows? I mean, maybe they are, you know, giving private donations. Unlikely, but uh, yeah. And these Scottish crown jewels, they have quite a history. Um, in 1707, when the union was created between England and Scotland, they were locked away. <clears throat> in 1818, Sir Walter Scott, the famous author, he found them convenient. Um, and yeah, if you ever want to see them, they're permanently on exhibition in Edinburgh Castle. Oh, nice. Probably cost a fortune to get in there, I would think. So, uh, that reminds me, you know, during the night, I woke up and staggered to the bathroom, as I <laughs> do most evenings, about 2 or 3 a.m., and uh, I bought this new thing. It's, it's basically lights that you place in the bathroom, so you don't have to put the bathroom light on. And these lights... They make the toilet glow. It's, I think the purpose of them was to train children when they can use the bathroom. So if you go to the bathroom and the 
light is blue, it's telling you that you can use the bathroom. If you go to the bathroom and you walk in and the light is red, it's telling you that you have to lift the toilet lid uh, before you use the bathroom. So it's a way to train kids about uh, how to use the bathroom during the night. So yeah, it's a wonderful invention. You can get them on Amazon. They're only, I think, seven or eight pounds. And uh, I think I got them years ago uh, when my godchildren were staying here. I don't have children, but I do have godchildren. Let me explain what a godchild is. So, you know, in the Christian world, uh, when a baby is baptized, you usually have a couple of people there who promise to look after the kids if anything happens to the parents. It's kind of a mark of honor. If you're asked to be a godfather or a godmother, you basically have a responsibility for looking after the kids if the parents die. I mean, you don't really have that responsibility, but you just kind of pay attention to the kids' upbringing, you know? It's really a financial thing because if you ask someone uh, to be your kid's godfather, you, I suppose the godfather is kind of expected to buy the kid's gifts, maybe leave an inheritance in their will, something like that. You know, it's, uh, uh, it's a mark of friendship, but maybe it's something more uh, financial. I don't know. For some families, it definitely would be. So anyway... Uh, these kids, uh, when they were very young, would come and stay uh, with us. So I got these lights just to, um, just to help train them when they wanted to use the bathroom during the night. Uh, but <laughs> this morning I was staggering to the bathroom, and uh, uh, yeah, the toilet was kind of glowing blue, and I thought, oh, gee, it's just like a throne. You know, I was expecting Camilla to be staggering out of the bathroom with that white dress and tiara with those bad teeth she has, you know. Um, but thankfully, I did not encounter her. And uh, I was half asleep anyway. She could have been there, but <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, so, yeah, that's it for me. So that was today's uh, phrase, um, marking. So marking papers, marking an event to have a mark, so there's a verb and a noun there, to mark and a mark, and remember also a boy's name, Mark. So there we are, that's it, I hope you've enjoyed this, see you soon, bye.